A parachute for NASA's Low Density Supersonic Decelerator, or LDSD, failed to deploy this afternoon. The craft, that looks like a flying saucer, was carried by a balloon to nearly 120,000 feet over the ocean near Kauai, Hawaii. The LDSD vehicle was dropped by a balloon and a rocket engine kicked in, carrying it to the edge of the stratosphere. After the rocket ride, a supersonic parachute deployed at speeds approaching Mach 4, and it appears to have shredded into pieces. Right after the launch, we spoke to CBS space consultant Bill Harwood. So that's the second test in a row that they, uh, they haven't been able to get the parachute to fully inflate in a stable fashion. Uh, when they tried this last year, the parachute disintegrated almost instantly. They made a lot of changes, thought they had those problems resolved, and then as we just saw, uh, the parachute did not inflate this time either. So they're going to have to go back to the drawing board and give this a little bit more thought. Uh, this is pretty significant, Bill, because as we were talking about this earlier, that really was the component that they were looking at here. And in fact, right before we came on the air, we heard some of the NASA commentators talking about the different design this year versus what they had last year. But just give us some context again. This was essentially a braking system to simulate right. what the conditions would be on Mars. They had to get this craft all the way up to 180,000 feet and then deploy this chute, right? That's right, and they wanted to deploy it at a velocity of more than twice the speed of sound. This is the largest parachute ever built to be deployed at those kinds of very high velocities. Fully inflated, this parachute's 100 feet across. It's, it's really a, a huge parachute. And obviously, the shock of the inflation process at those velocities overcame the strength of the parachute. Now, they made several changes to the design of the chute, beefed it up where they thought, based on video from the first test last year, uh, that they'd be able to handle that. Uh, but obviously uh, not quite yet. But, you know, then again, that's why you do testing here on Earth. Uh, it's a lot easier to fix a problem here than to send a spacecraft to Mars and run into a problem. And so, Bill, what happens now? Obviously, you said back to the drawing board, but realistically, how long does this process, process take to kind of figure out well, what exactly they did wrong, what they need to maybe try and redesign for the future? Well, it'll take several weeks before they get the data back. Now, the spacecraft will descend down to the ocean. There's a recovery crew standing by. Even without the parachute, they should get it back. They got the first one back. And of course, they'll retrieve the computers on board, the, the digital data cards where the video is stored. And then they'll spend several weeks going through that with a fine tooth comb, uh, trying to see if they can understand better what happened. Now, we saw very low resolution images today during this test, but the data stored on board that they will get after splashdown is very high resolution, high speed video. They'll get a real good idea of exactly what happened and hopefully gain some insights into what they need to do to fix it. This is not something they need to have ready for launch anytime in the very near future, but eventually NASA wants to be able to launch much heavier spacecraft than, they, than they've been able to do to date. And this technology is necessary to help these big spacecraft slow down in the very thin atmosphere of Mars. That's the goal, to, to, to decelerate very rapidly using that very thin atmosphere. And they're hopeful down the road they'll get this resolved, obviously. So, Bill, that was going to be my question here, is about the time frame for realistically when it is that NASA might be anywhere close to getting a workable sort of braking system that could be effective well, on, on Mars. What, I mean, with a setback like this again today, what are they looking at potentially for a time well, frame? This, this program includes three flights. So we've now seen two. There's another flight next year with an even larger version of this spacecraft. They will certainly implement uh, procedures to, to beef up the parachute and hopefully get it right on the third time. And if not, then it'll be up to NASA management to decide how much money they want to spend to continue pursuing this. It's not inexpensive. These three flights are part of a program valued at about $230 million. Uh, so there's a, there's a lot of impetus to get this technology perfected uh, so that they can launch heavier robotic landers in the near term and eventually, of course, to send people to Mars sometime in the 2030s. And this sort of technology is considered a requirement to get these massive spacecraft safely down to the surface. So I'm wondering, Bill, as we look at this, um, with this setback, is there any recoverable data that oh, might sure. be useful to them? Tell us about that. Oh, absolutely. You know, the, the, the cameras that are on board, high resolution, high speed video cameras, temperature sensors, all sorts of pressure sensors, uh, all of those are located in very, very rugged, I'll call it a black box uh, that's attached to the spacecraft. As soon as the recovery crews pull this aboard the recovery ship, they'll retrieve all of that, fly it back to the States, the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, and 
Pasadena, California, where this project is managed, and they'll go through that with a fine-tooth comb. They'll, they'll under, undoubtedly get some valuable insights into what happened with the parachute, also with the rocket motor and, of course, that inflatable collar that we can now see kind of flapping in the wind as the vehicle descends. That, that part appeared to work flawlessly. The parachute seems to be the stumbling block. All right, and there we see a video from earlier today as that helium balloon was launched into the air there with the, with the craft. So it looks like that first part of the technology, that in, inflatable collar that you mentioned, as you, as you said, that seemed to deploy just fine. There didn't appear to be any issues. Obviously, they'll get more data back here in the days ahead. But right now, that parachute remains uh, the, the stumbling block. And again, that's uh, another test is scheduled for next year, you said? A bigger shoot yeah, this time. Well, a bigger spacecraft, I'm not sure about the, the size of the chute, but there is one more test planned in the current program sometime next year. Uh, and again, hopefully they'll be able to gain some insights into this problem and make another attempt at uh, beefing up that parachute. All right. CBS News space consultant Bill Harwood, thank you very much for that. Sure thing.